Welcome back guys. In today's lecture, we're going to start our first class in routing. And basically, what we're going to look at is what's a router and what are the various functions of a router, how a router works, the various ports in a router, and uh, the memory types in a router. So guys, remember, in the previous classes, we have been able to handle introduction to networking, subnetting, and switching. And suppose guys have not watched that, those videos, kindly refer back to the previous classes. I will leave a link in the description part through which you can access all of the tutorials. So don't worry about anything. And before we begin, kindly guys, suppose you have not subscribed, kindly do us that favor. Click on the subscribe button and add as one count, okay? Alright guys, so without any further ado, let's begin our class. What is a router? Remember in the previous lecture, we did switching and we discussed what a switch is. And we said a switch is layer 2 device or a data link layer device that connects multiple devices for communication. Okay? And the switch uses MAC address table to forward frames. Alright guys, so today we are going to start our lectures on our router and go to routing technologies and other domains. Okay? So a router is a networking device that operates at network layer of OSI model to connect multiple or different networks. Basically, a router works at network layer of OSI model. And the main function of a router is to connect multiple networks. For example, in the diagram below, this is a separate network from this one. And if we, are, we have a switch in between, let's assume we remove all this router and replace only one switch. They will not communicate because a switch cannot do routing unless it's layer 3 switch. Okay, so the function of a router is to connect multiple network. This is a different network from this one. And the router will enable this host to communicate with the other host. And this one also with this host. Alright, basically a router uses IP address to send and receive data. While a switch uses MAC addresses. Okay guys. Then, a router performs packet directing function in the network. For example, let's say this network and this network. This host wants to communicate with the other host. First of all, it will send a, net, a packet to this router. So the router will know that this PC1 wants to communicate with this PC2. And it will forward the traffic to the right node, okay? So that PC2 can receive the packet, okay? So it directs packet in the network. So guys, what are the various functions of a router? First of all, is it joins multiple network. The way I've been saying that without a router, this network can, cannot communicate with this network unless we have a gateway in between a router. Okay? It assigns IP addresses to end devices. Support this, suppose this router has been configured as DCP server in this network. Okay? Then all the host devices in this network will be assigned IP addresses using this router as their DHCP server. So we can make a router as our DHCP server so that the devices can be assigned IP addresses automatically or dynamically. Okay? The last function of a router, a router selects best path when there are multiple links to the, the when there are multiple links to the destination. Okay. For example, in our case, PC1 is communicating with PC2. And for PC1 to communicate with PC2, it will first send the packet to this router. Okay? Then, the router has two paths to forward the, the traffic. 
it can fold through this one or through this one so based on some criteria that we will discuss later a router will choose the best path to forward the traffic okay whenever there are multiple or redundant links all right guys i hope you understand what a router means and the functions of a router remember a router operates at network layer of the OSI model and basically it connects multiple networks and it uses IP address to send and receive data okay guys so let's see what we have next how a router works guys basically we said in our previous class that a switch works through its MAC address table it refers to its MAC address table when a switch receives a frame it checks that a frame has which destination address then that destination ad address it refers to it MAC address table and say that this destination ad MAC address is connected through this port so the switch will follow the frame through that port okay so what's about the case of a router let's dig in when a package arrives at a router, the router will examine the destination IP address of, a, of the received packet and make routing decision accordingly. Okay? Then the routers use a routing table to determine how to which interface the packet will be sent. Just like in switching. The only difference is that in switching, switches use MAC address table and it checks the destination MAC address of the host but a router uses a routing table and checks destination IP address of the host okay then they forward that packet or frame for for the case of a switch it will forward a frame for the case of a router it will forward a packet through that interface that the destination host is connected right a routing table lists all networks for which the routes are known okay each router's routing table is unique and is stored in the RAM of the device okay and what's now a routing table this is the routing table the contents of routing table basically these are a very simple con concept it has destination addresses, destination IP addresses, okay, and the subnet mask and the subnet mask of each network. Then the interface through which that destination is connected. All right. So routing table is a set of rules, often viewed in table format that is used to determine where data packets traveling over an internet protocol network will be directed okay routing table basically determines the interface through which packets will be forwarded in the network okay all right guys so in this case let's say this is our router okay and uh, PC1 wants to communicate with PC2. It will send packet to router 0. Then the router will refer to its routing table and say that this packet is meant for which destination? This one. Okay? Then the router will say that the destination IP address is connected through which we interface. Ethernet zero then the router will forward that frame to this interface guys it's very simple so probably the interface was this one so the router will forward uh, each computer this one all right guys i hope you have understood how router works it's basically very simple just like in just like a switch the only difference is that a switch uses MAC address table and a router routing table switch uses MAC address while a router 
IP address okay so let's see what we have next the various ports in a router okay guys you know when you have that physical router you will have to see these ports we'll have to see serial port fast Ethernet ports console ports auxiliary ports power switch and and uh, power cord connection basically in power cord connection I think you just use your power cable and connect so that you can power on your switch your router okay but power switch is just a button turn on turn off okay so let's understand the various ports for example Ethernet ports some routers have gigabit Ethernet ports okay and um, for Ethernet ports, they are used to connect devices like switches, PCs, servers, and uh, other end devices. Okay? So this is where you can connect your PC. You can even connect your printer. Or even another connect to another switch. Alright, guys? And for the console port, we used to connect PC for local configuration. Basically what we mean by local configuration is that we love to plug in our PC. Let this one is our PC. Then connect it to the console port. Then configure the switch from this point. Okay? When you are seated here. Okay? We configure the switch here. Local configuration. When we are physically there. Okay guys? But auxiliary port, we use it to connect for modem, then remotely configure the device. So for auxiliary port, we'll connect our modem, okay? Then using some IP addresses, okay? We can configure that router when you are away remotely, okay? From our PC. Okay, guys. Just know that console port is used for local configuration, auxiliary port is used for remote configuration. Remote configuration you can use Telnet or SSH protocol. Okay. Then for serial ports, for serial port you basically is to connect different networks. Okay. And I can demonstrate. Let me show you something that you can see for serial for serial connection. So guys, this is what I meant. This is a serial connection. We can connect different network using serial connection. Okay, this is serial cable. I hope you have understood various ports in a router, such as auxiliary, console, Ethernet, and uh, serial port. Okay, memories, memory types in a router. Basically, we have these various type of memories in a router. We have RAM, we have RAM, ROM, Flash, and NVRAM. The content of RAM basically is running configuration. We have routing table. We have uh, ARP cache, which is a uh, address resolution protocol cache. Then working memory. For the case of uh, ROM, we have power on self test, we have bootstrap, we have ROM monitor mode, we have locate and load iOS. For the case of IO, for the case of Flash, we have iOS, additional configuration files, additional iOS images. Okay, and finally in VRAM, basically non volatile RAM, non volatile RAM, we have startup configuration and configuration register and a command to display this configuration and a command to display these domains one two three four for the case of ram you can use show running config show ip route show arp show memory okay and for the case of rom you can use you can use uh, show version show version 
it will work show version it will work guys shouldn't worry about it I think I just missed it uh. and for the case of flash you can need just enter command show flash and finally for the case of NVRAM non-volatile RAM you can use which command show startup config okay guys there's something that I want to explain RAM basically stores our setup configuration. Remember when, when we are configuring a device but you have not saved the configuration, they will be stored in RAM. Okay? But if we save them, they will be stored in MVRAM. When you save running configuration, they will be stored in NVRAM. But before we save them, they will be in RAM. Okay? That's why RAM is volatile, ROM is not volatile, Flash is not volatile, and NVRAM is not volatile. So it's only RAM that is volatile. That's why if you leave any configuration unsaved, then when you power over your device and power on again, those configuration will be all lost. Okay. Alright guys, so let's see what we have next. Oh, that's the end of today's lecture. And let's meet again in the second class. And before you log out, kindly make sure that you click on the subscribe button to support us. Thank you for your support. And let's see you again in the next class. Bye.